AI creating robot that can think with emotion and like human-like droids. Now, if, if we look at different lines of business within a typical organization, you also see a bit of a difference in the way AI is being deployed. And again, it shouldn't surprise you too much. A lot of it's driven by the quantitative nature of data that's used to feed AI. So today, mobile shopping is more and more popular, and at the same time, it generates a huge volume of data, like customer data, the location data, transaction data, payment data, and so on. The customer's behavior is shaping um, the digital transformation and the manufacturing. So it's B2C, and we call it new retail. We don't think it's human intelligence versus machine intelligence. What you actually need is human intelligence for machine intelligence. Now, which means you need people who know how to make this work. This is hardly a, a big revelation in itself. What do you think is AI? We may have uh, different responses uh, about what exactly constitutes AI. In big data analytics, there are three types of objectives. We call them descriptive, predictive, and the prescriptive. Just related to the three tasks AI can do. When you think about AI and the social and cultural implications of it, there are nuances between um, different cultures, different countries, um, different ways of approaching it. The, the, the proverbial um, you know, trolley going down the hill test, right, or the autonomous car, who which is going to kill, right, the, the baby or, or, or the old lady. We're now um, in the midst of launching our, our uh, new construction and safety program, which is, which is going to feature some AI in, in the way that uh, we're using real-time cameras of the construction sites, coupled with um, RFID proximity sensors on the big bits of equipment and on the workers, um, and using an AI engine to predict safety problems before they materialise in actual injury. AI increases revenue, and that's where our focus should be, rather than reducing costs.